I'm Professor Richard Whitman. Uh, I'm a senior fellow on the uh, UK and the Change in Europe program. Well, what the European Union has put in place is a, a system uh, of working together as a group of countries that's normally called working in the areas of justice and home affairs. And that really covers criminal justice, so that's people obviously being tried uh, uh, for the crimes that they've committed, but it also covers policing. And the justice and home affairs cooperation is an area again where the UK decides on a case-by-case -case basis which areas it wants to sign up to. And that's a decision that a British government takes. And Britain's part of the policing cooperation, uh, which is organized through a body called Europol, and that's uh, led by Brit. But it's also part of uh, arrangements like the Schengen Information System, which are for exchanging information between countries. Uh, but it's also part of something uh, called the European Arrest Warrant, well, Britain has an unusual position on uh, issues like security because uh, it's not fully part of all of the arrangements that the other member states have. The most important one of those is the Schengen Agreement, which is the open travel zone that exists between most countries on the continent. Britain's opted out of that, and the consequence of that means that Britain has its own border controls. Uh, to come into the UK, you have to go through border checks, whether you're an EU citizen or not. Uh, and that's different from if you move on to the continent, you can travel freely between the other uh, EU member states. One of the reasons why borders and security are quite closely tied together is because Britain's an island, and that allows it to exercise the control of its borders, which is not available to other EU member states. But saying that, Britain also has uh, a common travel area with the Republic of Ireland, which means that people can move freely between the Republic of Ireland uh, and the United Kingdom, which uh, is, of course, movement between uh, two European Union member states. Well, European arrest warrants are, are used to return people to countries uh, where there's been a criminal act uh, or uh, there is uh, a suspect uh, that's wanted for investigation and for trial. And in the case of Britain, it's used them for a whole range of uh, criminal justice offences, uh, which obviously include you know, the normal run-of-the-mill ways in which people break the law. And equally, other EU member states have sought to have their citizens uh, return to their countries for trial. But it's also been used to return uh, terrorist suspects to the UK. And this is one of the ways in which I think the criminal justice cooperation, the justice and home affairs cooperation, also uh, merges into uh, dealing with terrorism and broader security issues. So something that looks just to be uh, a policing or criminal justice collaboration actually is there and used as an instrument to deal with, with terrorism. So Britain has all sorts of arrangements in place where it shares information with other uh, governments like the United States, for example, like the Republic of Ireland, uh, where they're sharing information to help Britain in policing and to counter uh, terrorism and other criminal activity. And those arrangements, those bilateral arrangements, those arrangements of two countries, happen outside the European Union. And they're designed, obviously, to enhance or to improve British security, but they're nothing to do with the UK's membership of the European Union. Well, for, for the British government, as for other European governments, terrorism is now a major concern, in particular uh, with the conflict in Syria, uh, and anxiety about returned uh, fighters uh, from Syria uh, and ISIS, uh, ISIL. And so it's an area where after the Brussels and the Paris uh, bombings that uh, governments uh, have been talking about increasing cooperation. At the moment, this is done at a fairly low level. Information is exchanged primarily bilaterally or trilaterally. But the European Union is trying to, to boost the ways in which governments work together partly through Europol, the European Policing Agency, but also by exchanging information more systematically. And one of the things that they're now looking to do is to exchange information uh, on passengers, on planes. Uh, so the idea is that you protect yourself by vetting people before they fly. So rather than just dealing with people at borders, you try and look for uh, people who are people of interest through the information that you have in advance of their travel. And that's generally thought to be the best way uh, to preempt things like terrorist attacks. So you've got a blend, really, of bilateral uh, collaboration between governments, which is outside the European Union, but a sort of nascent and developing ambition on the part of the European Union to do more to assist governments to counter uh, the threat of terrorism. 
Well, one of the arrangements that's in place at the moment is you have what are called juxtaposed borders, which is that Britain and France carry out border checks in each other's countries. So travelers to the UK from France would have their passports and their immigration status checked in France. And the same for travelers from the UK going to France, if you're on the Eurostar, uh, for example, or at uh, uh, traveling across ports. Uh, and that's a bilateral agreement between Britain and France to allow for those checks to take place and one another's officials to operate in each other's countries. That's outside the European Union uh, and isn't dependent on European Union membership. Well, with Britain having control over its own borders, uh, there is obviously the ability for British governments to decide who comes into the country. But of course, getting close to British borders is also an issue for the UK, not least with the migration uh, crisis. So one of the ways that Britain works with other EU member states is through the European Union's own programs to assist in border control, working through things like uh, Frontex, which is a European Union border agency. And the idea there is that everybody does have a shared border. You may exercise your own border controls, you may check identity and operate immigration policy. But at the same time, there's a kind of security in depth, or there are borders in depth. So the European Union's external borders are to a certain extent the UK's borders, because of course, once people enter the European Union into the Schengen zone, they could then travel all the way to the UK's borders. So there is a, there is a connection between other, other states' border controls even if they are uh, to the Mediterranean uh, or to the Balkans. And the implications then for the way in which the UK gets to police its own borders. So the United Kingdom's defense budget is decided uh, without any reference to the European Union. Britain decides what it wants to spend on defense and how it spends it, for example, on Trident or new aircraft carriers, without any European Union program or policy which is uh, informing countries as to how they should organize their defense and informing them as to how they should spend their defense budgets. But the European Union has developed its own defense, the so-called common security and defense policy. And this is an area in which European governments have got together uh, to try and provide for European security, primarily in the areas of conflict management or conflict prevention. Now, defense in this area is not the same thing as creating a single army or a common army. It's more that member states have decided to pool their military expertise or their personnel for particular purposes. And countries opt in to the operations themselves. So Britain decides for itself whether it wants to be involved in military operations and then carries the costs of its own soldiers being involved in those operations because there's no European Union defense budget that pays for that kind of activity. Uh, the, the European Union, as it's developed a defence and security policy for itself, has sought to specialise in particular kinds of things, really sort of peacekeeping type operations. So that means controlling borders or keeping uh, warring parties apart. There are examples such as uh, sending uh, policing missions to uh, Central Africa to assist in building police capacity. There are uh, operations to help uh, armed forces uh, in the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, for example, to build up a national army and to train that army. Uh, there's also, at the moment, uh, a naval operation off the coast of the Somali coast, which is to counter terrorism uh, from that country. So really, security or defense activity, which is short of being involved in war fighting. NATO uh, organizes itself and does things entirely separate from the European Union in the defense area. And it, it does those as a group of countries which decide amongst themselves what they want to do, primarily through or under the leadership of the United States, which is a key player within NATO. And NATO's decided, for example, uh, to send forces to uh, Afghanistan in recent years, which Britain has been a part of. And those are decisions which are taken without any reference to the European Union or to the European Union's own, decision about its, own decisions about its own foreign and security policy. But the characteristic of NATO is it's built on the principle that if one country is attacked, then all the other member states of that organization uh, are committed to come to that country's end. So that's quite a big commitment to make if you're a member of the organization. So now it's over to you for discussion. And one of the questions I think is, would Britain be safer and more secure outside the European Union rather than inside the European Union? 
would be outside the European Union give Britain greater control over its borders, would be being outside the European Union give Britain the greater capacity to deal with terrorism through control of its borders and also more control over its security policy.